Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. I have to say, it's dang cold today. It was six below when we got up this morning. Hillary went to the Winter's Farmer's Market, and I thought I would take you there and show you what it's like. We're gonna have to take her car, because she's got my truck. Here we are, looks kind of busy. This is the Trip Hammer Mall in Ithaca, New York. Oh, that's pretty busy. Hey, Pete. Oh, Hi, man. good. Here is our booth. Oh, it's about a half an hour. Oh, wow. Gosh, yeah. Yep. I guess people want to cook chickens in the cold weather. I think so. <laughs> What do you got left in the other coolers? Uh, Quite a bit of pork. Sausage. I sold uh, ribs and one pork butt. I sold bacon. Uh, ground yeah. pork went this, today, but I only sold one breakfast so huh. far. It's weird. And how about beef? Ground beef, and I sold one bag of broth bones. So, oh yeah, getting down there. Yeah. So this is our indoor market for the winter. I'm outside from April till December. And then Hillary takes over from January through March. So we sell 50 weeks out of 52 weeks of the year. This is in a unheated atrium. It's okay in here. It's not as cold as it is outside. It's not windy. That's good. Yeah. But I'm not the one having to stand here for three and a half hours either. It runs from 1030 to 2 every Saturday. And we typically sell a lot fewer things just because stock's low this time of year. We do beef in the summer because it's all grass-fed. We finish on pasture. We're fully stocked with pork, but you know, beef is getting down there. And chickens from last year, we still got quite a few stew hens, but broiler chickens are starting to run down. There's a lot of different kinds of stuff here. Of course, we got lots of winter vegetables that can store. And bread, of course, I gotta get in the bread line here. I agree with that. Look at that, Valentine's. Isn't that perfect? <laughs> Thank you very much. Can I get a Tabata, please? You bet. <laughs> Old habits don't die. Would you say the mix of people is different in the winter market versus the summer market? Yeah, I would say so. There's less uh, college students, for sure. Yeah, it's more like everybody who comes comes to buy. and Because yeah. there isn't as much to stand around and look at and not as much to have to eat for lunch, although there are some food vendors here. Yeah. Lots of winter vegetables do well in storage. There's cabbages, of course, potatoes, onions. These are radishes and it's like radishes, I guess. And then things like kale will grow year round here in high tunnels. What are these? Uh, spinach. Really? Yeah, and this is marsh salad. You know marsh salad? People are all crazy about it these days. It's a corn salad. Um, it's, it's it's what? It's a corn salad. It's a European uh, uh, salad. You want to try this? <laughs> I'll try it. I'll eat the whole thing. Really, it's you like you're gonna like it. Welcome. It's a very winter hearty uh, salad. It's nutty, fruity. It's nice and tender for yes. growing in the cold weather. Yes. Wow. Sweet potatoes, yams. Yeah. Sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes. Yeah. And apples, of course. Hi, Alex. How are you? Lots of onions. Beets, carrots, garlic, potatoes. This 
cider, apple cider, milk, cheese, meats, potatoes, and onions from my neighbor at the summer market. <laughs> Just about every variety of potato you can imagine. Look at all this. Daikon radishes. These things are giant. Honey. Mm -hmm. So the market takes place in this L-shaped atrium and then if you go down here there's a part two. Here we go. This is another L-shaped atrium only it's a bit smaller with fewer vendors in it. We've got some ready to eat food here. More food? More food? These are my neighbors. This is the best food in Ithaca. <laughs> hey, this is pretty amazing. Yeah, she's like she's um... winter tulips grown in winter in this cold climate in bloom. Look at that! Wow. <laughs> More meats. Lots of meats. I was talking to one of the other vendors. This market definitely has a different feel from the summer market course. Not nearly as many sites here. As people who come, come to buy, especially in this weather when it's cold. Well, are you sold out yet? Well, I sold out of some things. Oh yeah. I run into a lot of people, even around here, but especially online, who think that farmer's markets are something that runs only during nice weather. But farmers, just like everybody else, need income year-round, especially in our business, raising livestock. We have stock year-round. It may be a little bit less in the wintertime because we grow most things on pasture, but we need a sales outlet. If the farmer's market went May through October, that would seriously cut into our income. And you think about it, people eat every day, 365 days a year. They should be have access to a market where they can get good local foods every week at least. That's my little tour of summer market and my little rant about the importance of local food. Now we're going to head home and do some other stuff. Real men aren't afraid of the cold. Right, Henry? Yeah. We're real men. Yeah. Us men are going to go right over here. It's been a while since this Super A was run. In fact, it's probably been since last winter. I was delinquent in starting it. It's warmed up to about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which in Celsius is... Henry's an expert at this stuff. Um, Negative 56? Something like that. Yeah, I would say so. Kelvin? Probably about <laughs> 10 Kelvin, right? 10? Yeah, sure. Where yeah. zero is absolute zero? Uh, yeah, I think about 10. Yeah, yeah. That sounds right. Does she have gas? I have my patented Farmall gas gauge here. Yeah, not much. You know, if it doesn't start, this could be a waste of perfectly good gas. Right? Yep. Cost me lots of money. I don't know. You might not have dinner tonight. Fortunately, I had the presence of mind to disconnect the battery after the last time I used it. So hopefully it's got some juice in it. Maybe not. I don't know. Yeah? I'm going to cheat a little bit because I know this tractor starts hard when it's cold, real cold. A little bit. Well, that's not going to work. Where'd that come from? I think we'll go to plan B, Henry. What's plan B? Uh, there's always a plan B. Armstrong starter. But I gotta go down. I gotta go down the shop and get it. Are you gonna have to push? Yeah. I don't know. I think I've done this before. Here's the home of the magic spark maker. Also known as a magneto. 
I just love these things. We got the cover on the magneto open to expose the points and let's check. I don't see no spark. I brought some fine emery cloth with me to clean up the points with. You may wonder why we're doing this on the coldest day of the year. I've been promising Henry to do this for a bunch of weekends and uh, that one Saturday or Sunday when he's home from school we would do this and I was busy with the Super C and so now we finally have time. Besides, I got tired of sitting inside. I sat us inside yesterday because it was cold. I can't take that too much. Oh yeah, it's sparking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, I went to clean up this rotor and noticed, hey, that ain't right. That's supposed to go out to the end of that so that when the rotor spins, it makes contact with each of these posts here to fire the spark plugs. Luckily, I have about 78 of these things laying around. Here's one. There we go. Well, dang it, Henry and I couldn't get this little tractor started, and I know what the problem is. It's the Magneto, this magic spark box down here. <laughs> I hate working on Magnetos. I've spent more time getting them going right, and I just washed my hands of them a few years ago. Any engine needs four things to start, any gas engine. It needs spark, it needs gas, it needs compression, and it needs proper timing. I know that this tractor's got the last three things. It's the spark that's the problem. So I went on eBay and I ordered a salvaged uh, distributor and I'm going to replace the magneto on this with a distributor. I'm going to have to rebuild it in the shop and then bring it out here and stick it on the tractor. I'm going to pull the 756 in the shop to start doing work on that. So we'll get this revived in place up here in the barn and that'll be a project for another day. I always like to sort of contain the story in a video start to end, but I can't on this one so y'all are going to have to wait. I hope you have a great day. And I'll see you next time.